So last night I was brushing my teeth and I felt a tiny little pain that started bleeding in between my two front teeth. And I thought that could be a sign of the suture opening. Um, and uh, now when I woke up in the morning, I can see a small gap forming. I, I know you probably don't see, but usually my teeth are fully touching, but now I can see light passing through my front teeth. I'm eating pomegranate. I'm already getting stuff stuck between my teeth. So I'm about to do uh, my set of turns for tonight that will mark this as uh, exactly one week since installation. And, uh, you know, I was like noticing a gap forming and then I didn't notice any change for the past few days. So I started getting in my head like, like, is this expanding? Is it not? Am I like actually noticing a gap forming? Is it just in my head? I thought it would have been a little more by now. I have three more weeks to go. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. So I've been trying to keep everything clean, uh, under the MSC and around the MSC, but I'm having still like a little bit of irritation on behind the back screws and I'm wondering if that's like uh, the early onset of like infection or something. I don't know. So, so it's some sort of irritation. Um, so I think the cleaning that I was doing is not quite enough. And so I'm, I've been experimenting with like how best to clean under here. I have a couple of things that I kind of picked up so maybe you guys can try it out too. The first is, is that they gave you these little bristle brushes to get under the device and they told me that, um, oh, if you have a water pick flosser that works better, but I actually feel like a combination works best. The water pick flosser is really um, powerful and it's really sensitive to be hitting on the wound directly and it just d does not feel good. So. What I've been doing is I've been bending this into different directions, so maybe 90 degree angle, so I can get under this way, or maybe I'll bend it completely uh, down so I can come from the back, and also to get under the arms, and that, you know that'll get some of the big stuff out. And then what I'll do is I'll take my water pick flosser, which if you haven't seen before, is, is one of these electric, you know, pressurized water hits into your mouth. And what I'll do is I'll have the water kind of hit the palate before the MSC and I'll angle it just perfectly so the water hits the palate and bounces off and curves around and gets under the MSC and starts pushing the water out but not directly where it's so much. Something around here. Then I kind of hiss like a cat and try to blow air out of the device and really push out any food or anything like that. And even then, you know, I sometimes I feel like I have to do this a lot to really get everything out. So that's annoying. And then the last thing I'll do is I have these saline packets. I think you can do this. I, I think this is fine. They said saline rinse and uh, these are meant for nasal rinsing, but I I'm pretty sure it's safe. But Anyway, I just take one of these packets, uh, you really don't need the whole thing, put it in water and gargle it as if it was mouthwash and maybe try to really, I do it upside down too, to like really get the water all in the MSC and stuff. So that's kind of how I've been keeping it clean. And even with all of that, I, I, I feel like uh, maybe I should be doing more. And so that's why I wanted to share it with you because it's more important than I thought it would be. So I was a little worried about not seeing any visual changes in my bite after 18 turns, which is nine days. So I talked to Dr. Yoon, my orthodontist who installed the device, and she says that it usually the diastema or gap opens up around two to three weeks. So I'm still on track. There's nothing unusual going on. Um, but what she did say is that I may try 
three turns a day for one week and then go back to two turns a day, uh, which confused me. But uh, after some back and forth, she clarified that my original next appointment with her, which was December 7th, is a mid check. Uh, she intended for the mid check to be 60 turns. Then she'll evaluate how the expansion has worked and then see if she can expand further using the same expander or if she'll need a second expander. I guess I realized I, I don't know how much she really wants to expand by. 60 turns, by the way, is eight millimeters of expansion. She said that my expander can afford 67 turns, so there's no problem if I do that one week of three turns and go back to two turns. It's just going to change how many turns I do by the mid-check, not, not my total treatment. One thing that she also reassured me about is that uh, we cannot over-expand. She didn't really say why, but one of my concerns is what if I'm starting to get screw drag, which is when the screws start dragging through the bone, or what if some of the screws are bending or... Um, anything like that. I did send her some photos over email, but you can't really be sure without some scans. Um, I, I don't know. I, I'm really just putting my faith into Dr. Yoon here. Uh, I don't know if this is normal or what treatment is supposed to be like. So I do feel a little bit in the dark, but I have faith. So, oh, I wanted to also say something on that note, which is Dr. Yoon's office, when I go in there, I feel very kind of like, oh, they're super low on time. This is all very rushed. And so, and then things aren't really kind of explained very well. So, you know, he, here I am. Like, I, 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 guess I wasn't even sure how much expansion we were supposed to be doing. I didn't even know how many turns we were supposed to be doing. I thought I'd be getting the device off in four weeks. Turns out it's just a mid-check to see if maybe I need a new, whole new device. Um, I think some of the other orthodontist office were much more kind of organized and I felt much clearer about what was going on. That's something to know. I, I know it sounds like it doesn't matter, but I, I think it kind of does, you know, especially because I'm doing this vlog here and I'm trying to give all the information to you and I don't even <laughs> know what's going on in my own treatment. I feel like when it comes to these kind of operations, clarity and reassurance is really valuable. I think that's my only criticism so far with my treatment. Oh, by the way, I forgot to say this in a previous video, but when I got the MSC installed by Dr. Yoon, she did not do corticopuncture or corticotomy. She originally said she would during the consultation, but then the day of, she said that you know, cortical puncture doesn't seem to make a difference, so we're going to skip it, so. So last night, <laughs> I was doing my turns, and I was debating. Remember, I heard from Dr. Yoon uh, the other day through email that I may do three turns for a week. Uh, so I guess she left it up to me. So anyway, I was doing my turns. And one thing that I've been noticing the past couple days is that every day that this goes by, there's more and more resistance when I turn the key of the MSE. So I did my first turn, you know, some resistance. Did my second turn, had quite a bit of resistance and some pressure. And then at that point, I just decided to stop. I, I feel like there's no rush. Um, and if she's leaving it up to me, I'll just, you know, I, I'm not in a hurry to see any visual progress. I'd rather keep things slow and steady, but you know, I, I don't exactly know what I'm doing. So, so if anyone thinks otherwise, please let me know. But yeah, I think I'll just do two turns and then count, go into the mid check with 60 turns instead of 67. And maybe the treatment will last a little longer because of it, but I'm okay with that, whatever.